So we still in um we still in Genesis, our early part of Genesis. I know, like I said, it was a, it was a maybe a week from the last time I uploaded. Um, it's kind of up busy week. I had interviews, and I, like I said, I had to head out, help out with the church and stuff like that. But as soon as I could get a chance to make a video, that's what I was gonna do, and that's what I'm doing right now. I have been reading my Bible and stuff like that. that SR and the sobriety is still intact. Like, nothing's changed. Um, but we left off with um, Abraham. And that's another thing I need to break down too. Abraham and Sarah. I know that like in the Bible it says Abram and Sarai, but it's, it's basically short for like um, Abraham and Sarah. So I'm gonna start calling them Abraham and Sarah. It's easier for me to say. But last, last we left off was him convincing his wife that if, if they didn't, if the king and, and the pharaoh of Egypt didn't believe that they was brothers and sisters, that you know something bad was gonna happen. We don't have to get into it. But they was convinced that he was convinced that something bad was happening. And the theme of this, of the theme of Abraham's story is him, God giving him a plan, God moving him out of his land that he was in, and um telling him not to worry, telling him to trust, trust in him, and Abraham kind of being reluctant to it. Abraham kind of wanting to do stuff on his own. God did not tell Abraham to, um, to tell the Pharaoh or the king that, that um, Sarah was his sister instead of his wife. God did nothing like that. But that's, that's Abraham taking it to his own hands. That's Abraham trying to fix the situation on his own. Um, instead of just trusting what God told him to do and and risk death, you know what I'm saying? And risk all these things. When you trust in God, you gotta risk. You can't you can't you can't self-preserve yourself when you following God's plan because you gotta um you gotta trust that God's you know uh, preserving you anyways, no matter what's gonna happen. So that's what we left off at. Um, so after all of that, um, the next thing that happens is that the next pitfall that Abraham falls into is that he realizes that him and his wife can't conceive. They can't have kids, you know. And uh, he and God told him not to worry about any this stuff, that he would be the father of a nation and he would have a big name for himself. And he was going to be this big, you know, this big uh, figure you know, in history or whatever. And um, Abraham started to have doubt again. Him and his wife started having doubt again. And they ended up, um, they ended up, you know, convincing one of their servants, uh, her name is Hagar. Um, him and his wife, the, Sarah brought the girl to, to Abraham and they, and he, she gave her husband to, to uh, Hagar to uh, conceive a child with. And um, this is, again, not part of a, not part of a God's plan at all. God did not tell him to, to have your wife to offer up you to y'all servants to have a child. He didn't, this, this is Abraham again, going his own way. Oh, this Abraham again, just just doing what he want to do, not trusting that God's gonna bless him with so many kids and all that type of stuff. So they end up doing that, and and, and this is the first time that the Bible um, brings up to me when I've been reading it lately. Uh, brings up like slavery or, or servant servitude or something like that. So Hagar is the uh, servant, and she ends up agreeing with them to conceive a child for Abraham because they just want a child uh, that bad. And honestly, even today, you can you can see in the world that, that a lot of families, a lot of marriages, a lot of couples go through that type of stuff where they, where they want kids so bad to where they just willing to do anything to have them instead of just, um, instead of just praying to God and, um, and trusting, you know, trusting that he's gonna work out something for them. I got 
direct experience in this very category myself with my own daughter and my own family. So um, I can understand some aspects of it, but reading it now, Abraham had a direct line to God, so he was talking to God directly. I feel like he should have um, trusted God more in the story or whatnot, and because he he's talking to God directly. And I mean, we do we do do prayer and stuff like that, but the way that it's put here is that they they commute it, you know, often. I also want to say that I want to state the obvious right here too. Um, a woman giving up her husband to another woman for the uh, for the reason of having a child to grow their family. Um, if we if we go back into the Bible where I, in, in the old videos where I said that God put in, in, in the amenity between man and woman, that's basically like like unsaid beef or whatever between man and woman. Uh, an act like this. Can, can not only, uh, it's not only, it can only make that, that type of intimidity worse. Like, so the Bible states that, you know, there was problems, there was jealousy, of course, on um, Sarah's behalf, you know, because, you know what I'm saying, everything was agreed for and everything was happening. And maybe she, maybe she felt uh, sad that she couldn't, you know, provide that for her husband, you know. So, of course, God sees all this happening. God sees everything happening and he's he's seeing Abraham once again not um not going along with God's plan or whatever like that. So he pulls him to the side again and uh, speaks to Abraham, kind of reassuring him that you know he's gonna be fine if he just, you know, um if he just believes in God's plan and trusts God, like this is like the second or third time God done pulled him to the side to have this conversation with him. Um, you know, Abraham just, he tries to, he tries to fix a lot of things on his own, you know, and, and like I said, God just told him to look at the stars in the story and told him, you know, you're going to have as many kid, kids as as many stars as you can count, you know, you know, only if you go, you know, go along with this plan and stuff like that. So this is kind of like when a covenant is being made, I think this is kind of like the last time that they had a conversation together, um, you know, I think this is between him handing his wife out to the Pharaoh, between, um, between you know, whatever drama befell them both with, with, with uh, them offering, you know, Hagar to have a kid for them, um, which I'm pretty sure it did. I think it speaks on it. You know, I think Abraham is tired at this point, and he's at the point where he's willing to just trust God and it, it says in the Bible that, that that Abraham, you know, finally just trusted him, and um, you know, it doesn't speak of any stories after that where Abraham tried to veer off of God's plan or anything like that. What it does say at the end of Abraham's story is that um, he ends up with a with a lot of kids. God bless him with a bunch of kids, and he dies at like an old age. You know what I'm saying? So he he got his kids, he got his family. God kept his promise to him. And he got, you know, everything that he wanted, you know, as far as life and family and stuff like that goes. Um, that's going to be the story of Abraham. I'm trying to speed it up a little bit because some of the chapters I'm reading through, some of them are, some of them can be skipped over or I can just kind of just gloss over them. Some of them don't say much. The Bible's kind of broke down. I, I just want to really hit the stories of the Bible. And that's, that's basically our, that's basically like our first story. Our second story, besides Abraham, besides Adam and Eve, then it goes into Abraham. It goes into third. Goes in. We went from. Bear with me. We been. Don't seem like I'm posting that much, but we going we going through a lot of stuff so far. Story of Adam and Eve we did. Story of Noah we did. We just finishing up on the story of Abraham. So. Sometimes it seems like I'm not posting a lot. I know I try not to let too, too much time go by without me posting, but we are we are getting through it. We are getting through it story by story. And like I said, that's what I wanted to do was convey the stories and my own interpretation and what I thought about them. Um, told you what's going on with me. 
Um, I'm enjoying it. This weather is great out here. It's like it's only rained for like 30 minutes since I've been out here. Total, throughout the whole time I've been out here. It's sunny every day. I can go out and walk every day. I can exercise every day. It's the perfect environment, you know what I'm saying, for that type of thing. Um, opportunities are coming. Think great things are happening. Like I said, I'm sticking to the SR, sticking to the sobriety, getting into my Bible. And I'm sticking to those things. I'm, I'm, um, I'm trusting those things. Uh, like Abraham uh, trusted God's plan. So this, this is the plan I've laid out for myself, and I'm sticking to it. You know, you're going to get pushed back. You're going to have conversations with people. I've had people ask me multiple, multiple times. I know I'm in Las Vegas. I know I'm in a party city. Um, of course, the people that I'm meeting here drink, smoke. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't judge them. And if you're watching this video, we don't, we don't judge them. But their story isn't my story, and my story isn't your story. So that's that's one of the main reasons we don't judge them. Um, I'm gonna go back read some more of the Bible this week, and we're gonna. I'm try to do another another video tomorrow if I can. Try my best to. But for now. We finished up our Abraham. We're going to move on to the next story, and I'll let you know what that is in the next video. Um, like like the video if you like it. Comment if you uh, have a question or, you know, got anything you want me to look up for you. And I will see you in the next video. All right. I don't know if you're going to hear me. But, um... I wanted to share a story before I got started in this episode today on this part of the Bible we're covering today. So I get out here to Las Vegas and I just been walking around here lately. You know, where I'm at. I don't even know if you can see the mountains over here. Yeah. It's a good little shot of the mountains and the church right there. So I'm gonna try to speed it up. Oh, I got out here, I've been walking around, meeting people and stuff like that. Um, if you go up and down here, it's like businesses and stuff. If you go further down there, it turns it turns into uh, downtown Las Vegas, which is really cool to look at at night. Up here is pretty cool too. But I've just been, you know, walking around here just exploring the area, exercising and stuff like that. And um, I ran into a church that was handing out food um, maybe a week and a half ago. And uh, to me, it looked like they were struggling. So I asked them um, if they needed some help or whatever. Um, you know, with, with giving out the food or whatever. And they said they did. And so I ended up helping them out. And uh, they hand out food to people around here in the community, which is cool. Something that I type of stuff that I be wanting to be a part of, um, stuff that I like to see, and so it was no big deal for me to go over there and help them out, pass out food, load food, clean up, it was cool, they do it like on Wednesdays and Thursdays, anyways, finishing up, maybe a two minute story, um, afterwards, the lady just blessed me with so much food, so many boxes of food, this lady is in, is in control of so much food, I think she just through the city or through the through the state, just get uh like nine pallets of food. I remember unloading like nine pallets of food, and uh, and just she passed it out, and she helped, and she also shares the food with the people that help her out um, with it. Why am I saying this? It's just a it's not. A, I don't believe in coincidences. I think it's a reason I was supposed to be over there helping them. It's a reason I was supposed to be blessed with that food and stuff like that. When I was in Alabama. I didn't come across any any churches or anything like that that would uh, openly let me help, let me be a part of stuff, and share they uh, share they stuff with me like that, and invite me back, and just it's just been like a really warm welcome from that church. And I think they call it the Macedonia Church in North Las Vegas. Um, it's just further. It was it was further. It was further confirmation that I know that I was where I was supposed to be doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, we'll get into the episode now.